like I said, it's sort of an old school way of doing it. They were the first methods being used in what's called pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is an entire field or discipline that looked at making these kinds of decisions. And the, one of the reasons was it was very easy to model this analytically because you'd use things like Gaussians or whatever, or mixtures of Gaussians. And you could do this with modest amounts of data in a smallish, moderate number of dimensions. And because a lot of this was done before we had serious computers or before we had serious data, uh, this was really important. But sort of in the modern world, or not even the modern world anymore, but the world 20 years ago, which I like to think of as being modern, because back then I was in my 30s, and I'm hoping that I'm not like really that old. Now I know, oh man, I'm old. Okay, fine. But in the modern world, there are some liabilities of the generative method. First of all, these days, many of our signals are high dimensional, right? So we get some description of a signal, whether it's stock market data or whatever it is. I might have a feature space that's tens of thousands of dimensions, or at least many hundreds of dimensions. It's a very high dimensional vector. And if you actually want to represent a density in that high dimensional space, I, I wrote here that it's called sort of data hard. And what I mean by that is the thing becomes exponential in the number of features that you have. So you have to have sort of massive, massive, massive amounts of data. And even more, you know, we tend to think of uh, sort of uh, Google style data as being massive. No. You know, when you've got tens of thousands of dimensions, it, it's, it, the amount of data you need to densely sample that is, is exponential and we just don't have it. But there's even a bigger liability, okay? The bigger liability is that we don't actually care about modeling the whole class, right? If I've got sort of skin things and not skin things, you can imagine there's a whole bunch of colored pixels that have nothing to do with skin. I don't have to model that as not skin. We only care about making the right decisions, so we should be modeling the boundaries, the hard cases, the cases where I'm not really sure. And when you do a general model of a category or of a class, you're worried about the, the vast majority of them, so the skin pixels, not this, just this boundary that's next to the non-skin ones. And I'm not even totally sure what it means to model non-class, non-skin pixels, because that's everything from you know, the pixels on colored shirts to the pixels on grass to the pixels on tree bark. You know, it's kind of a weird, not, that non skin's not really a great class. What I care about is find me the pixels that may be labeled the skin or maybe not. And finally, I'm gonna give you a feature vector or a bunch of features that describe an instance. And we might not have any idea a priori which features actually are good for discriminating between the classes. So part of our building a classifier is essentially doing feature selection, right? We have to figure out what parts of the features or what parts of the signal are the sort of informative ones. And so for training a classifier, uh, our generative model has no way of talking about doing that. But uh, the methods we're about to talk about, which are called discriminative methods, inherently do that.